Uh, the Blair College of Health came into existence officially less than one year ago, and it was created thanks to a generous gift from Richard and Dolores Blair, honoring Richard's father, Dr. Andrew Blair, who was an iconic and beloved Charlotte physician in the 1940s and 50s. While the president and her senior leadership team and the Blair College Advisory Board considered the many possibilities opened up by having a new College of Health in Charlotte, the idea emerged under President Davies' leadership to create a Wellness Institute. And thus, along with the Blair College of Health, which added, was added to our organizational chart as of July 1st, uh, 2010, uh, also came into existence the Wellness Institute at Queens within the Blair College of Health. The mission of the Wellness Institute at Queens is to promote optimal wellness among the people of the region and beyond by convening thought leaders, identifying and disseminating best practices, and contributing to health policy development. Our vision for the Wellness Institute is that it will eventually become a valuable and influential resource regionally and nationally contri contributing to Queen's growing identity as a community anchor for health in the region. So that is the context for a remarkable chain of events that has brought us to this evening. On just Friday, uh, January 14th, <laughs> Mr. Stephen Cummings had a meeting with our president, uh, Dr. Pamela Davies, to discuss the possibility of Queen's offering a venue to host a wonderful physician guest speaker who had created a remarkably effective approach to whole body healing. Dr. Davis called me in, Dr. Davies called me in as the Dean of the College of Health and Jenny Matz as the Director of Community Relations and instantly we were on our way to swiftly pull together this night for you. And so we're very pleased to be able to stand here tonight and eagerly await the opportunity to learn from the master, Dr. Thomas Rao, in just a few minutes. The evening fits beautifully with the mission of the Wellness Institute to promote optimal wellness in the Queens University community and beyond. I want to acknowledge our co-sponsors, the Paracelsus Clinic, which of course is Dr. Rao's clinic, as you may have already read in his bio, and the Biological Medicine in, uh, Network, which supports his work in the United States and around the world. I want to thank my team, Linda and James, and all the volunteers tonight. And I want to acknowledge um, a special um, volunteer tonight, uh, Barbara Christian, who is director of the Biological Medicine Network, a program of the Marion Institute. Barbara has been involved from the beginning and I want to thank her for her tireless efforts to assist us in pulling together this event in the best way possible to showcase Dr. Rao's ideas. And I want to especially thank Jenny Matz, Director of Community Relations here at Queens, for providing the leadership to all the logistical efforts to pull this together in just 60 days that led us here tonight. Barbara and Jenny, could you please stand and let us acknowledge you? have one brief housekeeping note uh, before I begin the formal introduction, and that is that our event tonight will end with a book signing, and so we need to allow the author of the book, Dr. Rao, to exit uh, in advance of the crowd. So if you could just allow him to exit up the aisle to get to the book signing before you, I think the book signing will go much smoother that way. <laughs> So Dr. Rao's bio is summarized on your programs, and in the interest of time, I'm going to try not to repeat too much. Dr. Rao has served as the medical director of the Paracelsus Clinic, Center for Biological Medicine and Dentistry in Lustmüller, Switzerland, since 1992. A first of its kind in Switzerland, the Paracelsus Clinic is widely recognized as a center of excellence for natural medicine. It has grown into a dynamic team of 80 highly committed people. This includes eight doctors, five dentists, plus natural health, uh, natural health practitioners, nurses, and other staff. 
Absolutely unique to Paracelsus is the integration of a biological dentistry practice. All of these professionals abide by Dr. Rao's guideline to treat differently, you must think differently. Dr. Rao's articles are widely published and his lecture, he lectures extensively internationally. His book of collected papers was first published in 2003. His first book written for consumers was published in 2007, The Swiss Secret to Optimum Health, Dr. Rao's Diet for Whole Body Healing. And this book happily will be available for sale tonight and the book signing which will take place at the end of Dr. Rao's talk. There's so much more that I could share about this remarkable man, but since you came to hear him and not me, I will stop with that. And before we actually meet Dr. Rao, we have a brief video to show you a glimpse of his world, and after that, it will be our pleasure to welcome Dr. Thomas Rao. <coughs>
evening. I had to learn today how are y'all. <laughs> So that you can yeah. listen better. It's a little bit uncomfortable oh, for me. Now. Out here is okay? Yeah. Okay. If it's too nice, please make like this and then make my <laughs> Dr. Cody, thank you very much for the introduction. And I would like to thank to the Cummings, Karen and Stephen Cummings, who knew me since many years, and they made it possible, they gave the invitation to here, to come here, and they made this beautiful event happen. And thank you very much to the university that they uh, let us be here. And as you said already, Barbara, where is my <coughs> third Barbara? Yeah, thank you very much. She organizes my seminars worldwide, especially in United States since many years without you nothing would happen here in this country. <coughs> it's always the best people who are the important ones. <coughs> I would like to talk about biological medicine. Biological medicine is a medicine which just which is just different. It approaches the human being different than what orthodox medicine does. And how it is different, that's what I try to explain to you in this short PowerPoint presentation. I do this, as you told, since about nearly 30 years, but it's a permanent learning. Being a biological doctor, an alternative doctor, as you would say, it is a lifelong process. It's an eternal learning. It's having open ears, listening to the patient, looking at the patient, and just trying to have a different approach to thinking how uh, the body works. And that this is what it is about. <coughs> you saw the short uh, video show, the, the slides show in, about our clinic. It's in Switzerland, one hour east from Zurich, one hour from the airport, Zurich. And it is the biggest uh, clinic for alternative, or we call it biological medicine, uh, in Europe. It's an outpatient clinic, but we have a hotel which belongs to us, where the patients just nearby can stay, which is very important because nutrition is one of the most important factors for a long-term long maintenance of the health. And if you come to us, you will be taught very, very thoroughly uh, how you individually would have to uh, feed yourself to, to nutrify uh, what food is the correct one. Because you and you, you don't need the same food. It's very individualized what we do. And this is another point of our medicine. We do never treat diagnosis. We don't treat bundles of findings which you bring. We treat individuals. And the individuals are very different. And if you have a rheumatoid arthritis and you have one, you are treated differently <coughs> because we always treat individuals. <coughs> now, oops, it's an individual approach which heals from more or less all chronic <coughs> illness. Now, you could ask yourself, who goes to Switzerland and Paracelsus <laughs> Clinic as you have such an advanced medicine here in the United States. <coughs> but we get the patients who were not successful with their disease. That's normally who comes to us in the United States. As you might have heard, I did the final examination not only in Switzerland, but also in the United States. I come here since I was small. I always came here and I even did the studies on two locations. So I know exactly what goes on here in the, in the <coughs> United States uh, about medicine and how it is. And this is integrated in our uh, clinic. We <coughs> also provide you somehow a health 
so that you are less susceptible to diseases and infections. Especially for children, when they come, the children who are always sick, 10 times per, per year, they need whatever, antibiotics or a treatment. After one, two years in our treatment, in our nu nutrition, they are the healthiest in their classes. They no more get sick. And this is also active for, uh, uh, it's also true for chronic diseases. Our patients who are in a permanent treatment in our clinic, from Switzerland, from Germany, from Austria, we are at the, at the edge of the three countries, just where they come together. So we have patients from these three countries. When they come to our clinic, then they no more need emergency rooms. They don't get heart infarctions anymore. They have no more reoccurrences of their <coughs> infections and so on. And they need, well, this is the downside in a way for the pharmaceuticals, they need less medication, much less. Therefore, even though it, some, it seems to be a complicated approach, it's not complicated, it's very simple. It's bio about the body and logical, biologic. That's why we call it this way. We could also call it alternative, but alternative to what? <laughs> so, okay, so we like the other way, the more positive way, the biological, we like much more. And we are not complementary, other medicines are complementary to us. We are the basic medicine. That's our belief, of course. It's not really modest, but it's our belief. <laughs> it rebuilds. Now, this is a very important approach that we follow the thinking that your body rebuilds. I will talk about this a little bit later, but that's very important. Every organ can rebuild, and you just have to do it the correct way so that it can rebuild. No longer be dependent on most of pharmaceutical drugs, especially in our clinic, we never use anti-cholesterol because it's not needed. Cholesterol goes down very quickly. We never need antihypertensive medication. We never need <coughs> antibiotics because we have other approaches which are more effective. And we never need psychiatric remedies like antidepressants. So you have the four most frequent groups of medication which we don't need because not that we let the patient suffer or opposite. They don't get these diseases anymore. And cholesterol, anyhow, when you nutrify yourself correctly, then you won't have a high cholesterol. But again, you need a different diet that you. So it's not, even though I did this book, The Swiss Secret, which contains a lot about diet, but it is still individualized. What you will need, uh, read, uh, read in here, is just what principles but the details, of course, are individualized. <coughs> Therefore, now comes the good things, the two lo lower lines. It makes you more alert. That's what I listen at, what I hear all the time. I have an address in here in the book where, where you can put your comments. We ask the patients to put your comments, comments on drrouse.com. And the, the email is always full, but I write that I don't answer. So, but it's interesting what the patients say. Some say, I lost 20 kilograms, only with your, uh, 40 pounds, only with your diet. Another one says, Hashimoto's went away. Graves' disease just disappeared. With this change of metabolism, it is really a deep point change of metabolism. And what I see most is comments like, fibromyalgia went away, and chronic fatigue went away. Such things. And now we come to a very important dimension of modern medicine, that we have diseases which are new diseases. And these new diseases, they are so frequent. Chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, <coughs> multiple chemical sensitivity, and so on. But I will talk a little bit later about this. And what everybody likes, except the, the children, it lets you feel and look younger. <laughs> okay. And it's a very specialized approach to 
modern diseases, as I said, which you <laughs> don't find, on which you don't find the cause. Mm -hmm. Why do you don't find the cause for asthma, for cancer, for chronic fatigue, for fibromyalgia? Because it has causes, plural. And these causes, it's like a puzzle. The more pieces you find in this puzzle and you eliminate, the better the picture disappears. And therefore, we have a lot of patients. Did you know that fibromyalgia, what is the most frequent cause for fibromyalgia? Only by the way, did you know this? And you should know it in the United States because it's statins, anti-cholesterol remedies, especially women of more than 40 years of, years of age. When you have one or more years statins, you get to a indica indi uh, incidence of 40% of getting fibromyalgia problems. This is nowadays the most frequent cause. So just reduce or get away from these remedies. Mm -hmm. Then <coughs> we, have, we have a very, up, a very different uh, group of disease, and that's cancer. My practice, we are nine doctors in our clinic, and well, in the two clinics, and we have a lot of cancer patients. My patients, about half of my patients are cancer patients from all over the world. And I will talk a little bit later about this. It's a very specific approach also to autoimmune diseases. Multiple sclerosis, asthma, lupus, but especially multiple sclerosis is one of my favorite diagnosis to treat because there you really have the better results than orthodox medicine. I can stand behind this because we have numbers. Only as an example, multiple sclerosis, I have <coughs> observed over more than 10 years now, and out of our multiple sclerosis patients, I can observe 80 persons over more than 10 years in my treatment with multiple sclerosis orthodox medicine diagnosed with MRI, and they have a reoccurrence rate of 2%, 2, not 20% or 12%, which is in the whole literature. No literature shows less than 10% per year reoccurrence. We have 2% in our, well, it's not a study, 80 patients over 10 years, but still, I would say that's not bad. And we have a lot of patients, especially <coughs> since we have the fresh cell treatments, which I will talk afterwards, which just come out of their symptoms, which regain capacity, which they have lost long ago. Next, <coughs> why does it work so well? Because it follows three very simple principles. First, nowadays, the the, the diseases, the cause of our modern diseases, our modern patient is a toxic patient. And we find the toxicity in more and more patients. This is the most dramatic development which I occurred in the last 20 years. I do this since 20 years now. And how much toxicity increased and how many patients, especially American patients, have a genetic deficiency to detoxify. They have a lack of glutathione transferase or of epoxyhydrolase. These are the detoxification enzymes. And they have a genetic lack and can't detoxify. So they store and store and store until they get sick of this. And everybody who still says mercury is not toxic for the body, they should just go into the literature instead of having such things. Toxicity is very frequent nowadays. And on my patients who come to me with the chronic diseases, nothing helps. They just have to detoxify. And their body begins to regenerate by themselves. It should be always the whole lifetime. <coughs> you have a, a regenerating capacity, otherwise you wouldn't be here. The fact that you are here proves that you are alive. And alive means you balance your body, you regenerate your body, and diseases get 
uh, processed in Nolim. But the more toxic you are, the less you can process loads, and the loads get heavy and make you older and sicker. High toxicity blocks the regulation. Then the next paradigm. Go to our new web page. It is called www. Dr. Rouse Way, one word, Dr. Rouse Way dot com. And you will read in a lay people's language, you will read about the three paradigms, Dr. Rouse Way dot com. Now, the intestines and the intestinal bacteria, they are the main components to immune system, but also to health. This probably you didn't hear yet how important the intestinal bacteria are for the rebuilding of the body. Did you know that we have more bacteria in us, in the intestines, than we have cells, body cells? Many more, 10 to 100 times, wherever you look, the literature are different numbers, but everybody knows nowadays that we have more intestinal bacteria than we have cells. So we have water a lot, 65% we should have. So we are a water bag. And then we have so many bacteria, so we are a bacteria bag, water and bacteria bag. And some Thomas Rouse cells are still there. But this brings us away from the bacteria are hurting the body thinking. This is wrong. It's the milieu which hurts and which makes disease. And it's never the bacteria. They are crucial to the body's detoxification process. When I have a patient and the patient has a cancer, for example, we measured in all cancer patients, more than 1,000 patients were tested for toxicity. They are all toxic. <coughs> and then we tested the intestinal bacteria by a comprehensive stool analysis and testing the intestinal bacteria, not a single cancer patient who had normal detoxification and anti-acidifying bacteria. If you find a cancer patient who has a normal intestinal flora and a normal intestinal health uh, immune situation, show it to me, you get a week for free in <laughs> No, because they don't find one. Um, yeah, no, it's really, we did, we tested over, over 1,000 patients T just to see. So there must be a relationship between the intestinal situation and the immune system, because anyhow the T-limb cells are in the intestines as payers patches for the ones who are professionals. They are in the small intestines, we have our lymph system. And if the lymph system is not stimulated by the bacteria, you have a weak lymph system, a lymphatic immune system, and you can't hit cancer cells, because normally your lymph cells, your macrophages, your natural killer cells, as they are called professionally, they would notice, oops, there is a cancer cell around, and they would go to eat it. But they don't do this anymore because they are weak, because the intestines are a wreck. That's the problem. Therefore, the second point is the poor intestinal health. And the third and very optimistic part, now this was so negative, but now comes the optimistic part. You sit here and prove that you are still alive. So this means your organs rebuild. Did you ever think about, you go to give blood for, for, for the hospitals, you know, to donate blood, and, well, you lose blood, but you rebuild it in a month. This is only one example which everybody knows, but did you know that your liver cells, they regenerate in half a year, <coughs> that pancreas regenerates in two to three years, if you are diabetic? Or did you know that your heart is totally a new heart in two years? Of course, it's step by step. And the problem is that it only regenerates better if it's feed it better. And if the circumstances change, 
If you stay toxic, if you stay malnutrified, then you can't expect that the new cells get better. But if you change this and you feed <coughs> these cells specifically to rebuild, then they rebuild not only faster but also better. And in two years, you don't have your coronary stenosis anymore. Stent is for nothing. It serves the surgeon, but it, <coughs> it does not really serve you because you could do your own rebuilding. This is only one example, but it has to be done consequently over at least one period, better <coughs> two to three periods of the rebuilding time. In seven years, not a single cell is the same as today. So each organ rebuilds, and the natural re rebuilding can be increased very much. And this is that's a, uh, a new approach to medicine, a biological approach. Here you have it again. Next paradigm. It seems so simple and really trivial. All diseases have multi causes, <laughs> but. You go to a doctor with your MS, with your cancer, with your rheumatoid arthritis, and the so-called specialist tells you there is no cause for this disease, no. Therefore, we can't treat the cause, and we have to treat the symptoms, the expression of the disease. But there are causes, plural, and this is the important thing. And on these multi-causes we have to work. The more we find, the better it is. All diseases also have a triggering factor. So you have the causes that can exist for long term, and then <coughs> something comes between, and it makes the disease begin. Doctor, after I had the flu, I got rheumatoid arthritis. <coughs> Or when I broke my arm and had to lay for or whatever to do for, for several weeks, this began, then my asthma began. Such stories you hear all the time, and this was only the triggering factor. Of course, never the cause. The flu is not the cause for rheumatoid arthritis, but it can be the triggering factor. All diseases, therefore, <coughs> have to be treated multi-level kind. And it is like a barrel. I like pictures. Artists like pictures. And I, it's like a barrel which fills, and one day it overflows. And then you have your symptoms, well, in this picture. But what fills the barrel? This is important. Are you only keeping a cup here to protect from the, uh, to, to to treat the symptoms so that no water overflows. Oops, we have to put a cap here. No, we take the big Paracelsus drill and we make a hole here. And what does this mean? That long-term co-causes and triggering factors make a disease express. And we have to find the causes, which are the frequent ones. Now, I will take. 2,000 or 1,000 rheumatoid arthritis or MS patients or lupus or Hashimoto's or cancer patients. And let's look at these causes, which are the frequent ones. Dental. The dental is dramatic how much it, it can influence your health system. It's so dramatic that I would no more let my dentist go away because he is my most important treatment tool. He removes the, mer the mercury, which we then can drain the body from these toxins. He removes or he treats the root canals, which also make a bacterial <coughs> focus and the bacterial toxicity. Root canals, they can create many, many diseases. And I have so many <coughs> testimonials from patients who just got better with her rheumatoid <coughs> arthritis. I always speak about this disease because I was a specialist in rheumatology, and so I still have a lot of them. 
but also other diseases. I think about the, the I can't believe she was even the sister of our, one of our dentists, and she became a multiple sclerosis with severe paralysis of the legs and sensitivity no more. When a patient in such a situation comes to me, not over, not at that, he or she doesn't pass the door without the panoramic x-ray, which shows the tooth. And she had a root canal. Shortly before she had, because of an accident, she fell from the horse, she had a root canal on the front tooth. And this root canal produced a toxicity which even was measurable in dark field and in other tests, which made a toxic uh, phenomenon on her neural uh, cells, on her nerve sheets, myelin sheets. And she had orthodoxly diagnosed the MS with destruction of the myelin sheet. It took, even though she was the sister of our own dentist, she didn't believe, of course, she did this with another dentist because he did not agree. But after all, she removed the teeth, the tooth, which was highly an uh, infection uh, focus and a toxic focus. And she lost, after many months of having had the MS paralysis and the, the sensibility loss, she lost these symptoms, of course, with all the treatment. After <coughs> about a year being healthy, well, she had the hole here, which is not really good, of course, <laughs> nobody leaves our dental depart department with a hole. <laughs> because we make partials, we make bridges which we glue without injuring the two neighbors. We can make a, a, a partial temporary crown. And she had this, but she wanted a definitive solution. She went to another dentist. He made an implant two weeks after, full reoccurrence. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time after we removed the implant, which creates afterwards quite a hole. And now, which is years later, here, under our treatment. So this is a classical example well, a, 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 a little bit a, a bad example of a focus from the tools. From these are mainly bad. Chemical <coughs> toxins and preservatives. Preservatives in food. When you go to the food shop and you buy some food, they need a long shelf time. And how do they make a long shelf time? They put preservatives in, but you eat these preservatives. What means a preservative? It's an antioxidative agent. It makes metabolic processes slower. And it's antibacterial. Preservatives in foods, they are antibacterial, because no bacteria should, <coughs> should uh, grow on this uh, meat or whatever you buy. Therefore, they are antibacterial. You eat it, and in your intestines are the detoxification and the immune stimulation bacteria, and it's antibacterial <coughs> preservatives, and you destroy your intestinal health. My wife and myself, we come to the United States, <laughs> me, since more than 30 years, she, not so long, but we come very often. Both of us, we feel that your water is different from the water. Our intestinal flora, and I did even test it, and colleagues of mine who come to your country too, because you chlorinate your drinking water. And this is very bad. Chlorination is that no bacteria can grow in the water, but you drink this, and you make an antibacterial function in your intestines. And you change your intestinal health situation. And I, nowadays, I'm convinced that this is a co-cause 
not only chlorinization, but also, also fluoridization of the water in some towns, that this is very bad for your intestinal health situation, and intestinal health is whole body health. Therefore, don't drink chlorinated water or buy a cleaning and detoxification machine, one of these kind of filters, but which also works on chlorine, or buy bottled water to drink. And drink warm water, not cold water, please. Because cold reduces metabolism. Warm increases metabolism. And you want to be younger and more metabolic and more functioning. Therefore, warm drinks, you know, cold. At least hand warm. Better would be warm. Next, dysbiosis of the intestines. I talked about this, the bacteria in our intestines. I will get to this later. Next is hyperacidity and hyperproteinization, which is a very important factor. I cover this later. And <coughs> then a uh, lack of trace elements and mineral deficiency. So these are the most important factors, the most important factors which we treat on our chronic patients. And if you only do this, they profit already a lot. So simple, biological, so simple. Electromagnetic and geopathic loads. I just had a patient who could not more, no more live in New York City, in Manhattan. He lived in one of these skyscrapers. And he told me where I live, where my apartment is, I have 350, uh, how do you say, wire, wireless, uh, nets which address my my apartment. Each one has a vibration, electromagnetic impulse to your body. Very bad. Tinnitus is very often or most often caused by electromagnetic load. Young people, they call, they hold <coughs> day and night they hold their phone to their ear. Well, not only young people, even adults think like this the whole day. And <coughs> it is permanent electromagnetic load which changes the cellular activity in your body. Brain cancer can be caused. Tinnitus is caused. I said hand and I said is caused. Because we have so many patients <coughs> in whom we change the influences <coughs> of their ears, the electromagnetic influences, deeply changed, and they got out of tinnitus after years. <coughs> These are the causes. Well, it's the same what I said. Nutrition is very important. You read in this book, which you can buy afterwards outside, you read in this book about the nutrition and simple rules to do how to address your body. Well, the, the rest, you see, all chronic diseases can be caused this way. All chronic diseases, toxical, long, wrong nutrition, <coughs> heavy metals, intestinal flora, mineral deficiency, and then comes something which the homeopathic doctors say, it's the constitutional type. One person tends to this, one person tends to somebody, something else. And this is the constitutional type, what the homeopaths speak about. But you see, this is only one pillar and the temple all is still standing, even without this pillar. That's not so important. That's why I'm a gifted and very experienced homeopath, too. I learned this very in-depth. But nowadays, these factors, they are the important ones. And I can say this after thousands of patients, just testing. And when we, when we balance these factors, then they get better. They just get out of their disease because then the body has his regenerative <coughs> functions again and can come out. 
even out of cancer. The way the, can the cell develops to cancer, it can re-develop out of malignancy. We had this many times, many times. Patients, when they come to us, even if cancer is still around, look, in the <coughs> stage three, metastasize to places where you can't treat them, can't operate, you can't remove the cancer. Well, so we have to change the cancer cells and we are not thinking about killing. We are thinking about changing and increasing the health situation <coughs> so that you, even if you have cancer, can work against these cancer cells as if you would be somebody who believes not to have cancer. But we all have cancer cells. Why don't we get all cancerous? Because our immune system gets the cells. The beginning uh, is recognized in the body because you have an active, reacting body and it, it, it eats, so to say, the cancer cells. Heavy metal detoxic, uh, heavy metal toxification, <coughs> fatty acid deficiencies, and hyperacidity and hyperproteinization are the most well of the of the causes which I said. These are the most frequent causes. Have you been tested on this ever? Do you have a autoimmune disease? Do you know which disease? is the fastest growing in adults of our age in the United States, Hashimoto's disease. When I was a little young student and doctor, nobody had Hashimoto's. This was very rare. Nowadays, it's epidemic. And it's a disease which is caused by mercury, or at least co-caused by mercury. We find it in all the patients. Or <coughs> Lyme disease. Go to YouTube and take your time to read, uh, to look at my my uh, video, which is there about my, uh, my speech, which is on YouTube, Doctor Rao, then you, uh, then Lyme disease, and then you will find a four series film which uh, of a speech, Lyme disease which is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi and makes these horrible situations, especially in young people. <coughs> it's epidemic. But did you know that it's not about the bacteria, it's about the milieu? Because the Borrelia, which produces lime, is not by itself a toxic bacterium. It only gets pathogenic, gets toxic, when the milieu is according to. And you have to change the milieu and the bacteria begins to become a friendly bacteria. I had a girl who was paralyzed. They brought it after such a speech. They brought the girl, they had to carry this 20 year old young girl to the people, to the, the guest where, uh, to the, the host where, where I lived at this uh, conference, by the people and they brought this girl in. 20 years old student. She were, was no more able to use the computer because the coordination and the connection between the eyes, she understood everything, but she couldn't turn it anymore to words. And then she wrote on the computer, it was a salad of, of, of tickets and words, absolutely un understandable. And she had no more the, <coughs> the capacity to, to concentrate. And she was more than half a year on IV antibiotics, <coughs> and it still did not work. It's the wrong <coughs> approach. We changed the milieu, we de detoxified, we did upbuilding of the intestinal milieu, and we gave fatty acids. She was on the floor for fatty acids, and this increases the the aggressive <coughs> behavior of the bacteria, and now, one and a half year later, she's back to university, she gained weight, absolutely a beautiful, young, healthy lady, but before, two years downhill, and she was this all the specialist, but it was the wrong approach. Antibacterial 
instead of pro EU approach. Well, what are we doing? A patient comes to us with whatever this is. So I have to look for these basic conditions because I can get into more depth. Patients come with big tight bags of x-rays and MRIs and, and specialist reports. Especially the American patient. I tell them, please understand, it's not that I don't estimate this, but please understand that I take it away. Because why are you coming to Switzerland? Because you want the other approach. And I'm an orthodox doctor too. Therefore, if I read all this, I get channeled into this thinking. And that's exactly what I don't want and you don't want. Let us <coughs> go to your body from another side. And this is the other side. <coughs> Dental examination and panoramic x-ray, dark field microscopy. I can't believe that dark field microscopy is forbidden in the United States. This is, well, I'm best here. But otherwise I would say it's criminal to forbid dark field. <laughs> because it shows you. It, sho it is one of the only findings and methods where you can see the reactivity of the cells. For example, I had a patient here from Charlotte and he came with hypertension. He came with, well, different things and we found in the dark field no reactivity, absolutely no regulation which is a typical sign for heavy metal. We tested the heavy metals and we found totally out of the range. A finding, we did a detoxification, we took the amalgams out and the patient got after years a rash and fever and shaking for several days. The body began to react again, congratulations. You prove that there is still a regulatory capacity in you. Just <laughs> have to live through it. We help you with IVs and so on. And after several days, it was better. No more problems today, after years. Intestinal flora, heart rate variability, and so on and so on. This is what we measure, what we test when the patient comes to us. Here you see a dental panoramic x-ray. <coughs> here is the, you see a bridge here, then crowns here, then, well, this, it's not even a, a very bad one, but the, the patient had here a focus, a bacterial, after the removing of this tooth by a dentist who meant it very well, and was even a biological dentist, but this patient did not have the, the working through this situation, forces and got a chronic bacterial problem here. And then about this I will talk just in a minute. The dark field microscopy. <coughs> you see a sick one and you see a healthy one. A very important difference. Now, <coughs> Let us make a short explanation. Good. A short explanation. What do we see here? We see the cells are glued together. Such a patient doesn't have the capacity to upbuild the to upbuild the the to take in the oxygen, because the cells who should take the oxygen, they are <coughs> stuck together. So they have no more functional surface. So this patient has too little oxygen. And what happens? A good reacting individual says, oh, I have to, to pull this out of one another. I have to make an increase of circulation that more oxygen comes to the brain. I have to increase the blood pressure. 
If you have in your yard, in the tubes, you would have oil instead of water. You would need more pressure to, to circulate this water. It's, it's clear. This blood needs a higher pressure. And what is the difference? Here, you see the cells, they no more push themselves from one another. Or there is a, a membrane <coughs> of protein in this dark field. If you would, well, the projection is not so good, you would see here a membrane of protein. <coughs> so it's two factors to this. The cells ha don't have their magnetic load, and which is due to minerals, and the cells are stuck together because <coughs> protein, which you can't process, is glue. We eat our glue with <laughs> our nutrition. Let's come shortly to this. Decreased magnetic <coughs> cell load, hyperprotein film. Now, click. Why? Because they have a decreased magnetic load, because they have a lack <coughs> of nutrition. There are statistical numbers, oh I don't, I forgot the little booklet. There are statistical numbers from the, from the health department in Switzerland, in Germany, probably here too. And it shows that 1950, the intake of minerals and trace elements was 100%. Nowadays, it's in average 22%. One fourth of the minerals intake, even though we eat more, because the nutrition is a wreck. And the second is here, the hyperprotein film. We eat three times more today protein than 60 years ago. Three times more. And this makes such a disbalance that it creates all these ciliatory diseases, like coronary heart disease, like hypertension, like diabetes, like osteoarthritis, and many others too. They are fully depending on your nutrition. And if we see this, even though we believe that we eat well, it is not true. The average <coughs> patient does not eat well. Too little minerals and trace elements and too many proteins, which makes these phenomena. This is not my numbers, which in my imagination is. No, it is official numbers from health departments, <coughs> state health departments. Now we have <coughs> test methods where we can test this. One is the high, is the thermoregulation test. It would need too much and I run out of time. But this is a very specific test method which shows this. And we have other <coughs> test methods. Now, what are the treatments? What we do? Detox, as I said many times, neural therapies, which are specific injections with homeopathic remedies, are two points to acupuncture points. So to say it's homeopathy, stimulation of meridians, and acupuncture in one. It's a specific method which we develop then homeopathic remedies, but very important are the infusions here, the IVs, IVs infusions, antioxidants, vitamins, but also you would call it chelation, which is the drainage of heavy metals, and nutritional supplements, amino acids, minerals, and so on. That's what you have here too. But especially for cancer patients, we have whole body hypothermia, which increases the activity of the natural killer cells very, very much, <laughs> and colon therapy, and reforestation, and other things. Each disease has also a mental or spiritual background, and we have psychologists who work on this too. But it's only one co-factor, never the only Therapy. Cancer patients, there we have, on especially on prostate and breast cancer, we have a big experience, big, big experience, 
and we have additional treatments, ozone, which unfortunately also is forbidden, cancer hates oxygen, and the too low oxygenation, as we saw in this horrible dark field, is also a reason why cells can change to cancer cells, why they have to begin to fermentate and to use glucose instead of proteins to, to be nutrified. And they fermentate and they build an acid uh, milieu. We counteract this lack of oxygenation of the cells, especially of the cancer cells, by in ozone and other oxygen <coughs> treatments. Very intensively. The, pa the patient gets this every day. Intravenous injection of pure oxygen, ionized oxygen. Local hypothermia, which changes the cancer cell membrane potential very much. And <coughs> local hypothermia and whole body hypothermia. The patient gets into a, a cabin under the, the, the guidance of the doctor and the permanent survey of the nurses and comes to a fever situation of about 104 uh, Fahrenheit. So, and this for several hours. And this increases the granulocytes and the natural killer cells in action for more than two weeks. We tested <coughs> this again and again. And it's known that this has the effect of a long-term immune stimulation. In the meantime, we build up the intestines so that the immune cells can rebuild, the ones which should work more, can rebuild. And we do other detoxification treatments. And something which is new, and we have extremely good results, especially on multiple sclerosis and other immune problems, autoimmune <coughs> patients, but of course also in cancer patients. But on cancer patients it's always difficult to judge because we do many treatments, not only one, many treatments. So it's difficult to say what they profit from one tool. But on autoimmune patients, I have a pa I have had a patient who had multiple sclerosis going downhill. And he had such a, a paresthesia in his fingers, he couldn't stand it anymore. And he told me once, we, I know him since many years, he's a, a, a drug mechanic, this kind of, of type, and absolutely solid on the ground as a, as a character. And <coughs> not the one who, who, who blames for everything. No, he was the solid guy, but he said, look, Thomas, sooner or later, I make a bullet in my head because I can't stand it anymore. This crippling and nothing helped. He has no money, so I said, I pay for it and let's do. And we began with the fresh cell treatments, which you would call stem cells, but they are not stem cells. What you call stem cells here in the United States, this is not stem cells, mm -hmm. because stem cells in human beings are very, would be, but they don't exist, they would be dangerous, <coughs> and would make extreme side effects, and they can change to cancerous. Therefore, there are not stem cells. There are extracts from newborn animal cells. And I gave him to this to him, and he called me next day, Thomas, can I come today again? I feel how it regresses, it goes back, it goes away, and after several injections, after months of going downhill and downhill, he was well again. And now he's back in profession, driving his truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. And we have the only ones who are officially, we got the permission as a study uh, uh, trial uh, in Europe. We are really the only ones. Intestinal, <coughs> well, the intestinal mucous membranes. I talked to you already how important they are. <coughs> it's a very fast regenerative, regenerative organs. And we even say, this is a philosophical approach from anthroposophical medicine. You might have heard about Rudolf Steiner, 
who became, would have become 150 this year. So <coughs> it's a very old philosophy of medicine that he said that intestinal bacteria and the intestinal mucous membranes and the liver are the carrier of the flame, the flame of regeneration. When you have a decreased regeneration, an early aging, then you need to upbuild these organs because they give like oil to the flame of regeneration to the whole body. It's a philosophical uh, uh, access to, to a theme, but it's very important. <coughs> and they are source of the parasitic <coughs> or other words, of the unconscious regulative nerve system. Destruction of the intestinal wall and the bacteria leads to immune weakness, autoimmune diseases and cancer. We have a measurement method, we say for the experts in here, the secretorial IgA in stool, which is absolutely parallel to the intactness of the intestinal membranes, of the surface of the intestinal membranes. We can measure this. And we know that cancer patients always, even if they have a breast cancer or brain cancer or whatever other cancer, they are decreased in surface in intestinal surface because they have either a food allergy, namely to dairy, wheat, or nuts. This is the most frequent allergen, the most frequent allergen, or they have preservatives and chemicals in the foods like phosphates. Coca-Cola contains phosphate and all these sweet springs. Sulfur in meats. Pig meat contains a lot of sulfur, <coughs> sulfates, or alcohols. These are the destroyers of the intestinal membranes, which afterwards destroy the intestinal flora, which afterwards destroys the immune system and gives way to building of cancer. Since we integrate this in our cancer and in our autoimmune treatment, the strict upbuilding of the intestinal system we have much the better results on our cancer patients. We do a for the patient treatment and not against the disease treatment. This is the big difference. I told you already, they deacidify the bacteria, they detoxify the body, and they stimulate the immune system, our dear bacteria. And only if this grass, it's like the grass in <coughs> the field, if the grass is good, no weed comes up. It's a principle in, the, in your garden. You need a good grass, no weed comes up. So we need a good intestinal flora, and then no weed or wrong bacteria can come up. And if you have this, Lyme is no problem and other infectious diseases. A good active intestinal flora is the most important factor for healthy aging. This is the basic detoxifier. All our cells renew very quickly. In seven years we have the whole body is renewed. I told you already. And these <coughs> organs which renew quickly are the ones which give us the life forces. Therefore, we do liver and intestinal treatment again and again on all our patients. <coughs> so, this was a very short overview on our treatments which we did. It follows these three pillars, and the cancer is one disease <coughs> which fits into this series, and the autoimmune diseases. These are the two categories of patients to whom we can help more than other places. This, I can say, is a very good feeling.
and of course others. But I talked about this already. A lot of that, that I presented in my book, not all of course, but a lot is in this book and how you can detoxify and upbuild yourself. And I thank you very much for coming here. <laughs> Sarcoidosis, yes, this is a, a disease, an autoimmune disease, which is a little bit similar to the form of tuberculosis. Biological doctors say it's a tuberculosis where you can't find tuberculinic bacteria, mm -hmm. and so it's called a paratuberculosis or sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> on these patients, we have, as in all uh, Autoimmune, it belongs to the autoimmune patients, but we know nowadays, and that's the, in a way the easy part, that there are still but several deficient bacteria behind, and for these bacteria, which are co-creator of autoimmune diseases, we have specific medication to drain these <laughs> hanging around chronic uh, bacteria, so-called cellular deficient bacteria. The rest is the same treatment, as I said. We have many sarcoidosis patients, many. Yeah. Well, as many autoimmune, different. For us, it's more or less all these diseases which have different names, lupus or, or sclerodermia or, 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 but they are all similarly based. Uh, I think the lady, we have, yes, you? No, you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering, how do we determine uh, for ourselves what level of health we currently have? So assuming we don't know that we have any particular disease or chronic disease, how can we determine where we are in the fullness of the barrel? Well, <laughs> the simplest way is come to Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> The second simplest way is go to a biological doctor or naturopathic uh, practitioner because they have this thinking. But what would we do if you came? We would make what I wrote, the three import most important factors. I would do a stool, a comprehensive stool analysis, cost about $200. I would do a heavy metal test with a doctor who knows how to do the heavy metal challenge test, the DMPS test, and measure this, a toxic profile, and I would, <coughs> I would do a fatty acid test. And as you are a lady who probably comes slowly but surely in a critical age, I would also <laughs> do hormonal tests. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, but Swiss boys are very connected. <laughs> yeah. This is, I said, I said to, <coughs> to Stephen, well, if you would come, no, no fear, we always find something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you. What do you think about um, a vegetarian diet versus a uh, animal protein diet? <coughs> if you are sick, I would suggest that you go for several months on a vegetarian diet. Why? You can read in here. This is, has nothing to do with philosophy and religion and, and whatever, but it's just a metabolic problem. If you are, for example, a diabetes. Since we integrate a strict <coughs> even a vegan diet in our clinic, we have the better effects 
on cancer patients much quicker and on autoimmune patients. There I can judge the <coughs> patients that don't come for long, longer term stay, so it's difficult to judge. But it is because the average population has a over proteinization of three times too much and they just have to come down with the proteins. Therefore, the, 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 the diet which has <coughs> quite been popular here in the United States, the high protein diet, mm. I believe it's the mess. Because it's really dangerous and it can make long term cardiac disease and then many others. That's my strict belief. 